but uh, not too far, uh, a few blocks down this way, is a place that I used to come to a lot. Uh, uh, well, not a lot, but it, uh, when I would have free time, when we would have free time, we would come here and dance and drink. Astrid. Uh huh. Yeah, and Erdwolf, my friend Erdwolf. You would dance. <laughs> Caleb's a very good dancer. You had a girlfriend before, though, yeah. You said her name when we were dancing, and then I put you to sleep, and you said her name again. Uh, I don't forget anything. Was I know. she pretty? She was handsome. Was she a boy? No, I said she. Oh, okay. She was handsome. <laughs> I'm trying to get an image of her in my brain here. Yeah. Did she have like a really good nose or something? The best. Really? For me. <laughs> You're mysterious, Caleb, you know that. <laughs> It was a long time ago, anyway. So, but do you like Astrid? <laughs> I, I, I did, yeah. yeah. Maybe she'll just want to hang out and be friends again. Yeah. I don't know. For a while she was the one, but that was a long time ago. stumbling away from that one. <laughs> so I cast um, Seeming, mm -hmm. and I make Beauregard look like Astrid, and I make Ford look like Eadwulf, and I make myself look like Trent Ikathon. By the way, just as a bit of flair here, um, everyone is still under Seeming, and people may or may not notice Caleb occasionally just staring at Seeming uh, Astrid. Mm -hmm. for stretches of time before shaking out of it multiple times. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go get Dyron. All right. Dyron, I look like Caleb's ex. Don't be weird. Wolf. It's good to see you again. It's good to see you too. It's been some time. You look good. Let's go. You can feel your heartbeat throughout your whole body just just your entire chest is, you know, hot and swelling with the nerves that are kind of curling in your stomach. It has been some time. I was not expecting you, Brian. Let's speak in our regular tongue. Of course. Hi. Hello? Um, I think I've been, uh, Imagining and dreading this moment for longer than I care to admit. Hmm. I'm sorry, dread was a word, but I'm sure you have your reasons. the room to meet you on the opposite couch. And sits and kind of rolls her sleeves up on her blouse where you can see the same marked maze-like tattoos that you have previously seen on Ada Wolf's. I'm so glad to see you. I'm glad to see you too, bro. I mean, it's been well over a decade that 
still often have talked about and wondered where you were, if you were okay. Part of that same spark that was seen in you could create a lot of sparks everywhere else. And uh, she kind of reaches up and scratches a bit, and you can see there's like burn scars on the side of her neck there. You've certainly proven now that you are in no way, shape, or failure. You know what the Mighty Nine and I are leaving to do? I've heard. And I'm very curious. It seems, I mean, it seems so not what I would have expected from you. So much more. I'm impressed, I'm proud. It is hard for me to understand what he wouldn't lie about. very genuinely mournful for your pain and your suffering. I, um, I'm sorry. I, I will never forget what we were. And even now, all these years later. I can't shake it, I still care a great deal about you. At least the girl I knew. her hand on your knee. I understand your anger. And as much as he's been our teacher, he's not infallible. He's just an old man with the right connections who will one day pass, like they all do. You always were ambitious. So are you apparently, Brent? I said, I'm proud of you. Um, it's good to see you. I think, um, I, I think I better go and raise my hand slowly up and just touch the scar, run my thumb down it. Scars. I regret none of them. Except one. Thank you for allowing me into your home. 
Maybe we will see each other again. You're welcome any time, Brent. I'd like to see more of you. Yeah, maybe we might speak in common again. We'll see. Um, my friends are depending on me. Of course. Buddy, you should probably get to them. Just sort of hang on her face for a minute. Think about staying. And walk towards the door. She gets up and follows behind. At your pace, keeping her own distance from you, so it's not the crowd. Kodnacht. Kodnacht. She grabs and squeezes your hand for a moment before giving a nod to her servant who opens the front door. Releases it, and just stands there, arms crossed in front, watching you. I turn and go. I look um, diagonally down at Edwolf. <clears throat> like a little more perspective, Wolf. How are things going? Well, at the moment, it is um, not as busy. So I am enjoying a little more of a relaxed schedule for now. You look good. Say again? You look good. Oh. Well, it's a wonder what travel will do, and uh, sun on your back. Hmm. You're like a living magical weapon. I like that type. Leaving the magical weapon. Uh, his uh, forearms are still as amazing as they always were. Yeah, they're more so. More so. He's a fit fucker. Yeah. He gives a little drink and <clears throat> nods to you. Uh, look over at Astrid. What about you? They have come in handy a number of times, yes. Do I require to give a presentation as well? She pulls her sleeves back and shows the same tattoos. Do you guys want to hang out or something? You want to go grab a drink? I was going to ask the same thing. What Why don't we to? get out of here? No, I, I have, um, I have Come on, to attend to. Hmm. <laughs> the invitation is always open. <laughs> and he begins to, to leave the chamber as he stands up. Wait. What if you just walked us a block or two away from the tower? Please. Looks back at Astrid. We walk you beyond the courtyard, yes. Astrid. Just to make sure you safely make it off the grounds. Pass the bottle over to Astrid. Okay. <laughs> Hands it over to Edelwolf, takes it, corks it. It you, vanishes. You, you could come with us. No, I you could. You could. No, I could not. Well, maybe we both have some thinking to do. Maybe. Are you talking to Astrid or Edwolf at this point? Sure. He's talking to Astrid. Okay. Just making sure. <laughs> uh, we'll be uh, out of the city soon. I don't know when we'll be back. No. Just be careful. I'm sorry I can't be of more help. Good spending time. Show cross paths again. 
and kind of puts his hand on your shoulder. She keeps bringing us together. Um, it would have been so interesting and awful and great to have, like, I mean, the the, the Essek and Astrid and Eadwolf are are fucking cool and beautiful and ambitious and everything that that Bren used to be attracted to and is uh, that are terrible for him. Uh, I mean, they're not yeah. the same way to like. Uh, so so complicated. Essek, he hopefully he can you know with time find a way uh, out of the hole that he dug himself into, but he is still. Uh, uh, I mean, it was only two months ago that all that where he was like found out, and his ambitions came crashing down around him. Long term, I have uh, high hopes for him, but it's going to be hard. Yeah, Caleb, no, Caleb knows from experience. Ostrid and Ed Wolf, I would love for them to redeem themselves, but they are still deep in the shit. Deep, deep, deep in the shit. Um, but they're also, um, you know, Caleb still has that aspect of him that is drawn to, to like that, that, that eager intellect and and ambition and um, savvy. Um, so it would have been really hard to navigate, which of course would have been fun to play at the table. So that yeah. die can burn in hell. Yeah. And I'll open that door and walk into um, uh, a very small room with a single Tudor-style window with glass to frost it over and opaque to see through and uh, sit down on a a chair in front of a desk looking uh, at a bed in the room, a small bed with the sheets completely ripped off and strewn about in the pillow on the floor and just sit in the chair and look at the bed for a while. What are you going to do about a home? Can can I trust you? Should I trust you? We could make it better. to. Side note, this is the the room that he came to last. Opens it and you guys look in and see a a very Zemnian style bed chamber, small, um, the equivalent of a school dorm. And there is a bed uh, with all the sheets totally messed and twisted and akimbo and books sitting on a a wooden desk uh, opened up. Uh, it's a student's room. This is this is uh, this is one of their bed chambers at the Zoltrus Academy. Was it? Uh, was this yours? Like yours? Uh, no. Oh, hers. Yes, it was. You spend a lot of time in this room. Mm. Oh my God! Did you do that to the sheets? <laughs> <laughs> A good one? Yeah. And sit at a table, like, on the edge of the dance floor and wait. Right. The usual table? Yeah. You can see the familiar lightish hair tumble past the eyes as they meet yours. And she beelines across the chamber and pulls the head back over her shoulders, smiles a bit before leaning forward. It's good to see you, Brian. It's good to see you. Have a seat. Thank you for uh, meeting me on such short notice. Mm. I, don't, I don't know. Um, I'm very nervous here. More than I have pin on our, our past meetings. I've sort of been uh, trying to rehearse all day what I would uh, talk to you about here. And uh, none of it seems appropriate. Uh, Things okay here after uh, dinner? Um, hmm. they've been interesting. Come on, let's dance. 
take her by the hand and lead her out into the middle of the floor. She goes along with you. And as you both begin to dance, interesting, it's been a while since you've been in a position to try and lead, but your partner is also often switching and taking the lead. There's almost a duel within the duet of a dance. As she kind of comes by and brushes past your ear and whispers, you need to be careful. Ludinus is very well aware of what has become of us. Knows of your proximity. Just be careful. I struggle with trust. And I want very much to trust you. I think we both know that's not entirely possible. Not if we're both to stay alive. I care very much for the friendship that we once had. But I don't trust you entirely, and I'm sure you do not trust me. And yet, I have come here today to ask you a favor, and we're being tracked. In fact, I may be watched at this very moment, which means you may be. Do you still wear one of these? Her eyes kind of still pass by yours, and she grabs your hand and begins leading you, and the dynamic of the dance has shifted. And as she brings your hand up across the shoulder, you see it brush past a cord on her neck where a similar mm. medallion briefly drifts out before it slides back beneath the shawl. She spins you around and pulls you in, and switching into Zemnian, she says, These are odd times indeed. But this confusion is advantageous. If there is any love left between us, I need more of these. And I um, just lay my head against her head and dance for a moment. Not forever. Not for anything against the Empire or you. My differences with you, we'll save them for a later day. But I need enough of these for my friends. For a few weeks, maybe. So that we can go unnoticed. And I, I promise you, as the boy that I once was, and the love that the three of us shared, I mean no harm against the Empire, or you, now, and I will bring them back. I'm begging, Astrid. As you kind of leaned into her, there's a brief moment where, even though you're still dancing, her body kind of seizes briefly, that kind of limber sway to the beat clams up ever so slightly. You feel her hand kind of touch her back and shoulder, and she falls back into lockstep with you and listens, there's that pause. and she just leans into your ear. You're just kind of cheek to cheek, not even looking at each other. I'll see what I can do. Just know there are eyes on you. Which means either we're walking into their trap or you beat them at their own game. As she says those things, um, and we're dancing around the room, I spot Jester and watch. 
tracking her insane dance moves <laughs> until we spin away. <laughs> and then I pull back a bit. <laughs> As you pull back, she pulls back a bit too. You can see her kind of like ride herself and smile, putting on that formal mask, that veneer that you've seen before. It drops again briefly. She looks at you once more in Zemni and says, I know you're here. It could be an opportunity. If you strike first. Well, it was good to see you. Enjoy the rest of your evening. And, um, well, maybe we'll catch up some other time. Fräulein. Cheers, Brian. She puts her hood up and goes to exit. You see her now kind of back against the wall, sitting on the ground, knees close to the chest, and she's just kind of curled up in a ball. Uh, is she just crying? Kind of, she's crying, isn't she? She's crying, you guys. Okay. It's hard to tell. Is there any cost for this information? No cost. Consider it um, a meager start to an apology. Well, uh, as I said, this is appreciated, and if uh, we can pull it out of the fire, it will stand to be of good use for all of this. I watch uh, a couple of teenagers strolling by the school grounds and watch them and say, uh, what will you be occupying yourself with for the coming week or so? Well, when Wolf returns, we have to check in and see what the next necessary thing is oh. for us to do. And if there is none, then whatever I wish to use to entertain myself. Well, I hope to report back to you at the end of the day with some good news. I hope so, too. These are not easy to procure. And for the number that you need, this is your best bet of what I could find. Just be careful. Do not raise a fuss. Best in and out quickly. And, uh, and she taps the little box and says, the rest will be self-explanatory. And she sits up and begins to make her way, taking a few steps before stopping, kind of looking over her shoulder and and just continues walking. I that must step in front of the door. Yes. Door shut. I reach behind me, click, click, just lock the door. Just want a conversation. A smaller one just kind of leans forward and goes, look, there is no conflict to be had here. We are just trying to convey a message to Bren. To Bren. And at this point you recognize the voice speaking in a Dwendalian Zemnian accent, a female uh. voice. Something you've heard before, at a dinner table. Mm-hmm. We have been dispatched to cut you all off. We are here to let you know in the short time we have that you need to go. Uh, where? Anywhere hmm. but here. If there's anyone important to you, leave with them. They both kind of look a little nervous, and the other one, the bigger one's kind of looking a little impatient. <laughs> the smaller one goes, Trent is, um, 
frustrated. And beyond this brief little string, it's the most we can help you with without putting ourselves in too much danger. You were never here. And I hope we don't meet again. You, your motivation, the one that sounds like Astrid, I understand. You, however, why are you helping us? I'm not helping you. I'm helping him. And she kind of just gestures up towards the rest of the building. For what it's worth, his intentions are good, and if things were different, we would be asking for your help, but... But they aren't different, and our intentions are not good. So you have to go. And as you go to complete the spell, the door entryway kind of opens up, and you see they're kind of darting in. You see Astrid, who looks over and kind of hand out. You 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 know the 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 presence here. This this is this is the the at the ready for a counter spell. Hmm. You finish reading. The rod begins to glow brightly. And. All of you feel yourselves being pulled from this reality as her hand goes limp. She let us go. Again. It's like Rolf in Sound of Music. (laughs) 